When you think of making spaghetti, what comes to mind? Probably putting pasta in a pot of boiling water, or maybe making it by hand. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to make virtual pasta and play it to Symphony No. 5 by Beethoven. Why I wanted to actually do this is irrelevant. Here's the story of how I made spaghetti in Unity. Now, before I show you how I actually did this, I should probably explain what I'm actually trying to do. In game design, there are generally two main types of physics objects, rigid bodies and soft bodies. Unity natively supports rigid bodies because they are much easier to compute than soft bodies. In the context of spaghetti, hard, dry spaghetti would act like a rigid body, but that's not what I'm trying to accomplish. So I need to make a soft body within Unity. My plan to accomplish this was, I would create a bunch of spheres, place them together in a line, and then connect them with joints so that they would stick to each other, hoping they would behave like spaghetti. It took me a while to actually get this to work. First, I was setting all the points to the exact same position, and second, I wasn't properly implementing the joints on one of the spheres, causing this to happen. Once I got both of those issues fixed, the end result looked like this. With this in place, I can create a mesh. I created an empty game object that would look at the transform position of each sphere in the spaghetti, and from there be able to write vertices which I could use to make the mesh. Now, if you're experienced in 3D game design and you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, why are you not using bones? You could just use bones for this, right? The answer is yes, but I didn't think about it at the time, and so I ended up doing it in a way that was much more difficult and took way more time. I'm going to spare you the hours of troubleshooting I had trying to make this work because I did use this idea for mesh generation, but I used a different method to actually find the points. Unity uses triangles to draw meshes, so in order to create the spaghetti, I have to draw two triangles like this and then loop it around and then repeat it a bunch of times for how long the spaghetti is. I have to also make code to draw the ends of the spaghetti because those are drawn differently. This requires a lot of math, and I stumbled a lot before finally figuring this out. But eventually I was able to figure out how to draw it somewhat correctly. I then made a simple bowl in Blender so I could have something to put the spaghetti in. I was having a lot of trouble with the spaghetti physics until I realized I could set the joints to limited, which at first produced this, but eventually I was able to get it to work. And when it first worked, I was super excited because it finally actually started to look like spaghetti. A quick thing I will note, I switched from spring joints to configurable joints because there were more properties that I were able to change. I then changed the method of calculating the points to creating game objects on start and then parenting them to the actual spheres so they would rotate alongside them. This was more taxing on my computer, but since this is a recording, I don't have to worry about frame rate too much. I then did one of my favorite things in game design, which is polishing. I added some lights and I used uh, screen space reflection and screen space global illumination as well as some other post-processing stuff as well to really create a somewhat realistic effect. Now, there's one more thing that I'll talk about in this video, and that's how I actually get the spaghettis to appear at the right time and at the right length. Now, as you might know, I made a rhythm game called Fish, and I'm very likely going to make more rhythm games in the future. So I know a lot about rhythm systems and more specifically, uh, what not to do. Since I'm only worrying about spawning spaghetti at the right time and at the right length, I used a method where I made a one pixel tall image. And then a script reads this as the music plays. And if the current pixel is above a certain brightness value, it will spawn a spaghetti there. And then the brightness determines how long the spaghetti is. One problem with the audio I used is that it doesn't keep uh, the same tempo throughout the entire song. So I had to adjust the BPM manually via keyframes, which was very annoying and it still doesn't sync up perfectly, but I personally think that it's close enough. And that about does it for this video. 
Um, please let me know in the comments uh, what you thought, uh, what you liked about this video, what you didn't like. I'm, uh, I'm all happy for feedback. And yeah, if you want to subscribe, um, that, that would be great. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed.